Max? Yeah. Air Raid Siren. Time for Monday Morning Fallout. Monday Morning Fallout, of course, when we overreact to the football weekend. And not as much to overreact to, but we'll get to that. Let's start with my three big thoughts. Thought number one, a return to normalcy. If you look across the Texas high school football landscape in week nine, generally speaking, uh, compared to the two weeks that came prior to it, it was a lot, a lot smoother, a lot calmer. Um, uh, no, as far as rankings are concerned, uh, if you're looking for big upsets in the top ten, there generally weren't a ton of them. Um, West Rusk lost lost again to Tatum. Um, you know there were a few others hither and yon, but but not not ones that I think would classify as giant upsets, at least in the top ten. Uh, where you saw things changing was in I was on a sh the show with uh, Craig Way's radio show, and he called it the undercurrent. Uh, that it's not quite up at the very top, but generally speaking, in a couple of weeks, when we take a look at the Texas high school football playoff brackets, a lot of the shape of the playoffs is going to be shaped by who wins third, fourth, and fifth in these districts. Mm -hmm. That's where you saw a lot of change. That's where you saw a lot of movement, and that's where you saw maybe uh, a little bit of, of um, kind of chaos wasn't a ton of it but it's little things little things that are going to set up tougher roads for people down the down the road so that's something to keep an eye on we've got standings up at texasfootball.com so make sure you check that out uh but we are getting very close to the playoffs we're now two weeks away from unwrapping the two weeks from today we'll be doing our bracket breakdowns and so think about that how is that possible i know that it's, it's two already weeks from here today. So, but for, for two but weeks from today is also our Veterans Day special. We'll have to figure out how to do we'll, that. Well, I think it's just going to have to be a longer show, I and I think we'll have a peanut gallery next to you that you'll have to put up with. I think that's right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, overall, a general return to normalcy in week nine of the Texas high football season. Thought number two help us, dear King. You're our <laughs> only hope. <laughs> so, it's now become pretty clear that there's only one team in the state, in college football, that has, like, a good chance to win its conference, right? The, there's only one. Mm -hmm. It's the Houston Cougars. And I don't think I'm overreacting to this because Texas spit the bit in, uh, in, in Stillwater. Yep, not like their schedule gets easier either. It's, yeah, exactly. They, they draw West Virginia this week. Mm -hmm. Not exactly. No rest for the weary. Um. Texas A&M goes to Mississippi State and loses to a team that honestly I think they're better than, but they they played they did not play well at all. Mm -hmm. um, TCU, oh god, <laughs> TCU lost to Kansas in football. Yeah, um, I couldn't believe that. Baylor, I, I came back. I didn't know what happened this weekend. Yeah, I came back to the Slack chat and I went through Shahan's uh, roundup. Mm -hmm. I what? Yeah. That's a thing that happened while I was gone. It was awful. Oh boy. Baylor got murder killed by West Virginia. But we knew they were out of the out of the race. Uh North Texas has two two conference losses now. They're probably out of the race. But that leaves the one team that looked legit great in this week of college football, and that was Houston. And they looked legit great. Playing without their best overall player. Mm-hmm. Ed Oliver was held out of this game. They went and they smoked South Florida. Don't let that scoreline fool you. That was a domination. 21 points is not enough to, to express uh, how much Houston dominated this game. They are the team that if we're going to have something interesting happening in the postseason for Texas college football, it's going to come from Houston. And it's going to come from their superstar quarterback, D.R. King, who had himself a game. Remember how last year they just kind of threw him at quarterback? It said, oh, let's see if this works. <laughs> also, when, when you say interesting, do you mean excluding the potential for, for Tom Herman to fight another coach in a, in a bowl game? Yeah, that would be fun, too. <laughs> I don't know what the heck he was doing, but in any case. He yeah. said there was a misunderstanding. I take him at his word. Yeah, G Gundy. Uh, uh, like most fights? Gundy said there was like a, yeah, basically. Like afterward, they, they met at uh, midfield. Yeah, I was going to say, well, like, I, was, I was then suddenly very interested in the postgame handshake. Was, and they were, they were just like, oh, no, you know, it seemed like they were like apologizing to each other. It seemed like Herm yeah, Herman thought Gundy was getting involved. Gundy was trying to get his guys away. Got it. And so that's what happened. Okay. So. In any case. It looks hilarious. Please help us, D.R. <laughs> King. Please help us. And thought number three, the exchange rate of style points. So what is it? 
right? Because there are some teams out there that are just that are are winning in go runaway terrific fashion in Texas high school football. Uh, teams like Mason are just absolutely clubbing people. Galena Park North Shore has probably scored more style points than any team in the state, and mm-hmm. they they once again brought the wood to a good team in Beaumont Westbrook and made it a no, no, a no contest. Um, but then you had games like Alvin Shadow Creek, who fell behind 34-7 to late in the third quarter and mounted a furious rally to come back and win that game, 35-34 to remain unbeaten. So there are almost no style points there for them, but a win is a win is a win. Mm-hmm. Um, Pleasant Grove. Pleasant Grove played Texarkana Liberty Ilo, a good, by the way, better than the record indicates Liberty Ilo team. Struggled with them and had to come back and win. Weren't exactly a ton of style points in that one. So, how do you measure style points in high school football? I think that that is something that will kind of shape your opinion of what what to expect going forward. If you value dominance, there are certainly dominant teams out there. But if you just value wins, you know, to, to quote a philosopher... It doesn't matter if you win by an inch or a mile. Winning's winning. That's Vin Diesel in, um, <laughs> in, in Fast and the Furious. Anyway, the exchange One of the greatest of all time. Three helmet stickers. A helmet sticker to Kerrville Tyvee athlete Trapper Pennell. First of all, Great player name. named Trapper. Great. Name. Trustworthy. Great. That's Texas 111 funny. yards passing, uh, 65 yards touchdown, uh, rushing, and four touchdowns. He had 43 receiving yards and two touchdowns, and he threw the game-winning two-point conversion in triple overtime as Tyvee beat Alamo Heights in a critical district win. Texas State quarterback Willie Jones. Uh-oh. Put that camera on that man. Okay. There he is, that beautiful sweatshirt. Been winning all year. <laughs> Willie, Jones, Willie Jones put on the cape for Texas State. And look, it wasn't pretty, and there, there, there were at times where this was an almost unwatchable game. Yeah, <laughs> but Texas State won this game because Willie Jones was pretty much the best player on the field, mm-hmm. and he put on the cape for them. A helmet sticker for Willie Jones, guiding Texas State. I'm sorry, guiding Southwest Texas to a victory. Get it right. Love those Ooh, Keep the uniforms. Hey. And Silverton athlete Neil Garcia. <clears throat> so this is a six man game, mm-hmm. but in a 110 to 72 win over Cress, Neil Garcia threw for, or ran for 359 yards and 10 touchdowns. He threw for 231 yards and five touchdowns, and he returned a kickoff for a touchdown. So he had 16 total touchdowns for Silverton as the Owls beat the Crest Kangaroos 110-72, a helmet sticker to Neil Garcia of Silverton. Three teams to watch. How about Amarillo Tascosa? What a win. Suddenly turning that district upside down uh, with a big win over Midland Lee. Uh, things get very interesting now in that district. Um and, and so keep an eye on Tascosa, who is suddenly very, who suddenly surging. Tarleton State, a wild game with Midwestern State, goes to overtime, and uh, Tarleton State survives on a on a mishandled extra point, and Tarleton State remains unfe- undefeated and remains uh, the best Division two team in the state. Uh, keep an eye on Tarleton State and Grapevine. Grapevine put a hurting on Colleyville Heritage. Um, I expected that game. To, I, I, I think I picked Grapevine to win, maybe. Maybe I didn't. I don't know. Hmm. I, but I figured it would be close either way, and it was not. Grapevine came out and laid the wood. Impressive from Grapevine. Keep an eye on them. Three to see for this upcoming week of football. It's Midway Temple Week, baby. If you have the means, get down to Temple, Texas, uh, to Wildcat Stadium for Midway and Temple. Fabulous, fabulous Central Texas game this weekend. A game I'm very much looking forward to, and I think a game that could help to shape what those brackets look like. Big game there. I'm actually looking forward to UTEP and Rice. Mm-hmm. I'm actually what's, looking what's forward to it. What's wrong with you? I'm actually looking forward to it because somebody's got to win. <laughs> That's true. Because somebody's got to win, and I want to see how far both of these teams under first-year coaches have come. Oh, man. So... I actually sure. look forward to you tipping race. Sure. And Battle of Unbeatens. Edgewood Buffalo this week. Uh, a very uh, hipster game of the week. Uh, Edgewood and Buffalo. Keep an eye on that one. Uh, those are three to see. And that is Monday Morning Fallout. <laughs>